Yo, what is going down, y'all? Welcome back to the most underrated sneaker channel on YouTube. Your words, not mine today, man. Today, we're doing it a little bit different, man. No podcast today. We're moving into a new podcast studio. The internet was not working yesterday. We just could not get the episode recorded. We're still gonna be back with the podcast this coming Friday. We just couldn't get today's episode done. So today, instead, we're dropping the interview with Slobby Robbie, which the homie Dow Palantonio and I did at Denver Sneaker Con. If you follow the podcast, you already know, man. If you have not been following the podcast, I don't know what you're doing with your life. You do not have to watch it on YouTube. You do not have to consume it all at once. I get that it's a two hour show, but that's what a talk show is. You know, you can throw the AirPods in, you can listen on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud while you're walking around going and getting groceries, picking up the kids from school. You can consume it in little chunks. You don't have to listen to it all at once. As you can see, the dynamics of the channel have kind of shifted. Now we got the podcast rolling. We're going to be dropping sneaker content again and actually just content in general. I'm now taking the leap into doing this full time, man. Podcasts, creating content, creating videos for you guys. It should be a lot of fun, man. So if you're not subscribed to this channel, please consider subscribing. Happy to have you here. But without further ado, check out the interview with my man Slobby Robbie. He dropped some gems in there, so pay attention, man. Hopefully you guys enjoy it, and we will see you fools Friday. Yo, what is going down, y'all? Welcome in the most underrated podcast, Denver Sneaker Con Edition. Motherfucking Slobby Robbie in the building, dog. How you doing, bro? Hey, live in the flesh, or yeah. at least in the fat. <laughs> the homie Thomas, the franchise, Dal Palantonio, chilling next to me. And uh, it's great to, to chop it up with you, man. We, we talked a little bit before. Um, tell me a little bit about, we've mentioned Generation Cool on the show. We've talked a lot about uh, Netflix and your special on the show. How did that come about? How did that even start? And how long have you had Generation Cool before the Netflix thing? Uh, well, you know, it, it all came through charm and good looks uh, and <laughs> a, a little bit of uh, a luck. Um, you know how most of this stuff works. Usually uh, things have to come together, you know. So not only did I have uh, a, a nice team of production that shot a nice pilot, uh, we had Complex interested as so, an entity that so. wanted to put out a, a full season. So we shot a season, ran a full season on Complex, on Go90 after that, which is a uh, little offshoot TV cable, and then Netflix liked it so much that they picked it up after that. Fine. So, do you guys have any plans for season two? Season two? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Shit, we, we got plans for season 12. Are you guys That's already shooting? Can it, can, uh, is this something we can expect? Um, I, I, you can expect a season two. Uh, I'm going to be shooting in the fall. Dope. With, uh, you know, usually something er to drop in early 2020, right around, you know, holidays, like the last episode, like the last season did on Netflix. What has that done for the business? I know you opened the new shop in Vegas. What has it done for the business in Arizona? Uh, you know, if, if it, one thing it's done, if anything, is bring regular people or tourists or people that weren't as familiar with vintage or sneaker culture or whatever, uh, you know, whatever aspect they ended up like kind of grabbing onto, it, it was a way to reach out to a lot of new eyes and a lot of people who maybe weren't as familiar with the things that we all do. Yeah, you bet. How long uh, has the new Vegas va uh, location been over One now? month. One month anniversary, yeah, almost dog. exactly. That's Give us, I was, I was just telling uh, you, we were stepping outside for a second, and I was just saying we, I was in Vegas for March Madness when the uh, Generation Cool party popped off. I couldn't get over there. The people I was with, I was just, it was just packed out. It was a bachelor party. We just couldn't make it over there. But uh, you said you have plans to move to the Strip. Yeah, so we're on Sahara right now. Um, you know, we with our goal is always to grow and always to get bigger. Uh, we've been lucky enough with the store in Tucson to kind of remodel and expand and get bigger and bigger. Whereas in Vegas, we're in a nice boutique, very specialized sort of private location, but uh, it enables us to have only high end top shelf vintage. So it's actually kind of really awesome for me and it's really easy to curate and sort of uh, hand pick a, a, a very specific section of goods uh, but our goal is always to get you know whether we you know whether we keep this one and open another one on the strip whatever but our goal is always to get as big as possible and sure. um, we're not too far off the strip right now and uh, it wouldn't be a stretch to, if you, to say that you might see us on the strip soon also hell yeah are you would you uh, would you just move the store completely or would you keep that one open I don't know it depends, depends, you know. Right? Yeah, we, we it, it, I don't see why we couldn't do both. It's, you know, it really all about convenience for, you know, locals, but then also the strip would be more convenient for tourists. The reason I ask is space. I feel like space would be an issue. You're going to get less space, obviously, on the strip. You being in a business where you kind of need retail space because you deal with it. It's not just clothing or streetwear. There's a ton of accessories. There's a ton of items. And so space-wise, how does I, that work out? Yeah, I mean, you. I, I enjoy playing up to the actual space itself. Like I said, the Vegas space is smaller, but it's it's a lot easier to uh, 
to to get really specific about what we do. And whereas in Tucson, we can have a sale rack with five and ten dollar yeah. goods and, sure. and 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 be a little more broad and diverse. Uh, but I actually really enjoy keeping it specific. All right, hold up. I'm sorry to interrupt the interview, but this is very pertinent to the interview and why the video came out the way it did. So I got to run this back for a second. Let's take a look at the replay. Let's run the footage back. You see my man JJ coming in the back of the frame here. Now during the interview, we have two cameras set up. He starts grabbing at our GoPro. Why you would do that during the interview that we're shooting, I have no idea. Maybe we can ask him on the podcast. He takes the GoPro out and walks away. So now we only have one camera set up, the camera on Slobby. We no longer have the camera on Dallas and I. If you follow the podcast, you know that JJ's the producer for the podcast, and maybe we can ask him on Friday what in the hell he was thinking here. Number one, why would you take one of the cameras away when we're in the middle of an interview? Number two, not only do we not have a camera for the next six minutes of the interview, I think the whole interview only goes like another eight minutes. Number three, I asked a bunch of questions at the beginning of the interview, so I was kind of popping off getting questions. Down Dallas starts asking questions. Now we have no camera to cut to Dallas. So it looks like I'm an egomaniac out here and Dallas is just not getting any film time. So I apologize for the one camera set up for pretty much the remainder of the interview. Nothing against my man Slobby Robbie, but I'm, I'm sure you guys would like some variety, some cutting back and forth. But unfortunately we can't do that because JJ took the camera. We have no clue why. So now that we got all that cleared up, I gave my man a light roast and now you guys understand why there's a one camera set up for pretty much the rest of the interview. Let's go ahead and continue. Take that L on the way out. Uh, the, the true meaning of a boutique is a, is a smaller, very specific store, you know, yeah, that's almost really what it should be. More of that intimacy, right? Like that's Absolutely. what I think of, you know, with that. So yeah. No, totally. sure, no, so I wouldn't mind having the intimate experience and kind of a big broad experience for everyone totally. also. Do you hit every sneaker con, or is this kind of like, is it you got to pick and choose? Was this close? I know you still live in Arizona. No, so uh, I, yeah, absolutely. Any Anyone that uh, I want to go to, I'm usually welcome to. Yeah. Uh, I've been to many uh, over the last year. Uh, I rarely, you know, unless I, ha I have other gigs and, and other appearances and, you know, depending on the show and meetings. But uh, I'm, I would say trying to go to every every other would be a good okay. way to, that yeah. I, I, I go for. <laughs> That's for sure. solid, man. Solid, solid. How uh, how are the new teams? Obviously, you've had to establish some new teams in your in your new locations. Um, how did you go about picking those uh, people? Just close friends? What yeah, that well, like? that you know, in, in our Vegas store, we're connected to Still Moving, which is a streetwear store next to us, okay. and those are good friends of ours. Dizzy Wright. Uh, and uh, the homie Angels, the manager over there and the co-owner. So we're all pretty close colleagues. So that one was easy. Nice. And uh, you know, get some trustworthy staff, whether you bring people from home or friends that live in the city, um, you know, it, it all comes pretty natural. Right now we got a couple, you know, youngsters that are on the on the vintage kind of come up sure. and are, you know, real hungry and hard workers. And then, you know, mix That's in some, that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. mix in some season management and, and you're good. Shit, man. Training you, they're uh, training their, their eyes. You got to yeah. have those eyes, man, for that exactly. Clothing, or, you know? Yeah, or just verbally abuse them. You know, <laughs> there you go. Until everything goes better. <laughs> totally. Did you, uh, did you cop have you copped anything yet at this sneaker con? No, I'm about to do my walk around. I came to see y'all first, man. Don't fuck yeah. so, uh, We appreciate so your time. My pockets man. are still fat. Hell yeah. I wouldn't mind getting me some Air Max, though. I got, I got my eye on a couple pair of, like, Denim Air Max 90s. That's yeah. what I was gonna ask. Is there anything specific you're no. looking for here? Me, I like to manifest some shit. So I like to think in my head of what am I expecting or what you know what am I hoping? I, and, I, and I would say uh, Air Max denim or Air Max uh, 90 duck camo. Those are two things I you know stuff that's not super old but not super new that I'd almost rather get in person and have a look at. Uh, pretty open, but I, I'm wearing, I'm buying a lot of up tempo Air Max and Bo Jacksons right now. Ooh, love those Bo Jackson trainers. The trainers are my shit for of sure. Of course. Let's let's talk about what you got on real quick, man. Look at this Chicago Bulls so fucking polo, man. Bro, I stole is, this from my grandpa's closet. <laughs> this man. is this is too nice, man. Mixing it with some camo overalls, and what what's the chain there, man? What's what's the bootleg chain there? Uh, this is all real Gucci. Is it? So yeah, this is a, you know yeah. this is a, an old Gucci belt buckle that I had fabricated into a medallion and redipped. And then this is a big Gucci belt that I had turned into like a flat chain to, to hold the, the weight of the medallion. So all vintage, early 80s Gucci pieces. Dude, I'm, I was... Who'd uh, thought? Exactly. Like, who'd who thought? thought belts? Come, old, old belts. Gucci belts, Versace belts being made into chains now. I learned that from your show. I wasn't really... I, I wasn't up yeah, on I mean, that. two I chains know. and a lot of people like were doing that kind of in the early, you know, late, to, late, late 2000s, early 2010. Right. Uh, and I mean, you know, Really, it, Gucci never really made, especially back then. Now that I think there are all these all these brand houses are catching on and really like um, 
catering to this kind of a crowd yeah, or yeah, catering yeah. and stuff like this, but I still never, you know, they're never going to make something like this. Um, of course. The way I always see it, if you want it, it's always best to make it yourself. No yeah, doubt. That's what's up, man. Do you not take all of your shit to SneakerCon normally, or do you not take a bunch of stuff to sell or anything like that? You just uh, kinda, no, we just do merch now, gotcha, man. Yeah. It, it's it's like a complicated, right? Anybody and their mom could set up, you know, wrinkly jerseys with the fucking right. mismatch hangers. <laughs> no, we, uh, you know, it's, it, you know, uh, uh, one thing you learn after a while is to sort of, um, you know, pick your pick your battles, but in a good way. And you know, we I think we've graduated, you know, having to bring you know twenty dollars jerseys across the country. Right. No doubt. Yeah, you got so two it, stores. Why do you yeah. need yeah, to bring? Yeah, we no, we we you know we do uh, activations. I'm doing stuff with the NBA and WNBA, and with that we'll bring in specialized selections of vintage and clothes. But wow. uh, you know, we haven't done you know we haven't moved vintage out of our store uh, for anything other than a very specialized event in a few years. Go ahead. That's fire for sure. No, man. I, yeah, when it came to the booth too, I didn't know what to expect, man. It's Slobby Robbie, you right. know. Like I, I, I didn't have expectations either because you never know, right? But dude, the the shirts that you have over there are pretty fire, man. You got the like starter logo with obviously the star of David, star of David, there, which yeah. is sick yeah. collab, dude. Oh, really it's like actually that. a pentagram. Oh, so <laughs> <it is>? <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> same thing, right? Yeah. That's my Stupid. that's same. my my other religion. Yeah, same but different. Yeah, no doubt, man. So no, the merch was super clean. You you actually copped a shirt yeah, franchise, I copped right? The, yep, copped the tee, copped the red joint. So I'm excited to rock that. Uh, I gotta get the green joint, man. What about the what about the young lady that you had helping over there, dude? Did you see the vintage? Uh, did you see the vintage like purple? Oh, totally. yeah. like jumper yep. that yeah, she had on. That's my girlfriend. We got super that dope. at Rose Bowl. Uh, yeah, that was one of those things where she was looking through a pile, man. Found yourself a dollar, a little dollar gem. We call it a dollar diamond, though. Yeah. God, One dollar make you holler. Yeah, no yeah. doubt, no doubt. Go ahead. When you're shopping for the vintage clothes, I do not see all of these stores. I, I'm watching the Netflix show, and I'm like, man, we do not have anything like that in Denver. We don't have all these different thrifts. We, there's thrift stores, obviously, just like anything, but we don't have like a huge thrift mart where it looks like you can just go buy all kinds of retro jerseys and retro shit and then uh the swap meets and you're going to get in the polo shit and the sign yeah. we don't ha like maybe i'm looking in the wrong spot probably probably no. um you know when people ask us where do you get your stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. the answer is everywhere right, right. Yeah. so whether where, it's instagram got... whether it's fucking your mom wants to send me an email <laughs> i walk into the store uh i drive to phoenix where you know however we got to get it we get it yeah um so you know flea markets swap meets uh yard sales um thrift stores you know i me personally i don't thrift a lot but i tend to walk in and find pretty good stuff whenever i'm killing time or you know it's for me that's sort of a side pleasure a hobby that's kind of private and i'll just go on my own every once in a blue moon but um it, you know it, it, again the law of attraction you know if you if you if you if you really have a good uh he, your head wrapped around what you want to find mm -hmm. um and start connecting yourself energy wise and and physically to the right outlets you're gonna find stuff you know i got nope. a leather mcm jacket here today so you got, what, you got, got that today yeah and oh, i got gosh. another dude over there with another mcm duffel that matches my set that i don't Same. have yet. Oh, so you know the universe will find a way of connecting you to what was meant to be dope I love it, man. I love that you always know what you're looking for, too. That's the sign of a good collector. Dow's sure. like that. He collects. He's big into toys. Has all that shit in the package still. I don't have sure. anything like that because I was an ADD kid. There's nothing. There's no way I could You just broke toys. everything. Yeah, 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 exactly. You had no discipline. Uh, thank you for coming on the show, yeah, man. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. you, dude. Thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, no doubt, dude. Much love. Cool, much Beautiful. love from our show, Most Underrated Podcast. Thank you, Slobby Robbie. Thanks, y'all.